Hello and welcome to another modeling video. This is Alan from the McConaughey at YouTube with a, another model video. Today, building or finishing off a build of the high grade Build Fighters Super Femina Titan made version. The difference with this model opposed to the other ones that I've uh, built is being a P Bandai limited edition model. It retailed in Australia for approximately $60 and as something out of my price point that I would have liked to have collected it being a fan of the original artwork, not so much of the finished kit and willing to buy it at a much lower rate. As I resell and buy kits in lots and in all different conditions including built and partially built or damaged this one came across my hands by a good friend of mine who built it and really didn't like it. I was able to acquire it for $20, which is a lot more than I usually pay for a built high grade, but uh, considering it's a desire, wasn't a problem at all. Now normally when you're trying to sell a finished or a partially finished piece of uh, work for someone else to continue modeling or using as parts, it can be very irritating to the person who ends up with the complete model and disassembling it and re-putting it back together going backwards and forwards in the instructions and writing various amounts of documentation. Luckily knowing the modeler and you can see in these pictures it has been initially snapped together very well but the process he's taken is nothing like my usual process and this is where it's interesting dismantling it and even causing a little bit of damage along the way to be repaired at a later date. It's also interesting to study parts that my friend does not necessarily focus on certain nubs, certain flash marks that I always remove before going into the painting stage. Now first noticing with unboxing and studying the parts going straight to the instructions what makes this model a little different opposed to just being a complete recolor to the Titan test team scheme is the additions of uh, cat ears, a cat tail, I believe rabbit ears as well and the instructions dictate this with extra panels showing where these additional parts can be attached with a few exceptional examples that if you want to have just the rabbit ears or the cat ears and the cat tail or just the tail this small extra bit of uh, runner thrown into this uh, kit is what pretty much sets it off in the price and rarity realm. My usual process of rebuilding a kit, and I've done this a few times, you remember with the Wavehawk Custom, I'll dismantle the model being humanoid or figurative. With robots, it doesn't matter. Tanks and planes, you just get a whole hull and extra details are glued together. Once we're going into articulated territory, it is very irritating. I break it down to lower uh, hips and legs as one part, arms and shoulders for one part, torso, head, weapons and accessories, and backpack. Each cluster of parts is assigned a Ziploc bag and I work from cluster to cluster by breaking it down to the minimal amount of parts, layering it down and taking a photo to remember how it goes back together or how it is in base part form to re-refer back to the instructions. Once all the parts are laid out, then I study each one for any extra or excess work done, damage, nubs, any imperfection and repetitively click the model back together and dismantle. My process of loosening the pegs is also done for easier uh, build and as I'm pulling and jarring open each part with a part separator, some of the pegs can snap. The instructions are still important to have as well as a reference of the finished model which I take a photo of before pulling apart and having it on a tablet or laptop. If the instructions do not come with the kit when you're buying second hand, have a look online such as Hobby Search or the manufacturer's web search, a little bit of a Google search or asking around certain boards if someone has the same kit for a scan to again study off a screen or a tablet. Condition wise I was very lucky that 
there was no gouging at the nub mark areas. The nubs were uh, protruding ever so slightly. Parts were not missing or particularly broken, especially points of articulation where pegging and putting a pin inside of a broken peg is required for added or additional strength. The model is well designed on that regards. Foil stickers were applied when peeled back a residue is left behind and washing or cleaning the plastic was definitely required with a very heavy solvent or stripper. Enough stickers were left behind to reapply for a new set of uh, eyes. I'm also not sure of the history of the model if it's been handed multiple times or if someone's handled it when they've had grease or food residue on their hands. So that's quite appropriate well before paint is being applied. Once each group has been inspected, cleaned and whatnot, I assemble according to color separation as this is the normal part of my model once I'm cutting off according to the instructions and test snapping. Plastic glue is or cement is applied at the seams to permanently join together and Mr. Dissolved seam line putty applied right over the seam and sometimes if it's quite long and likely to re-split reinforced with super glue. Each sector apart would be allowed 24 hours to dry or the next session pulled out sanded and a test amount of primer sprayed on top to look for further imperfections or again a split seam primer is applied via Tamiya lacquer primer in a bottle airbrushed with a 0.5 mil airbrush thinned with automotive lacquer thinner on little pegs stuck into a board once the final layer of primer has gone down, if any imperfections or fixes were made, all the parts are put back in a box after being test fitted in their localised subsections of legs or arms and resorted back into individual Ziploc bags according to the colour or base they're going to be airbrushed and clustered per colour mounted on their pegs and airbrushed and shaded from a fairly dark color upwards. I didn't want to base anything in a pure black or pure white. This model is very dark and depicted in artwork as being all black. I found multiple shades of metallic black or a very dark blue or another very dark color to base this. Shadow some areas with liquid black and highlight the tips of areas being quite playful to uh, bring as much uh, definition and interest to the subject that if you look at it from afar it does look like it's a full black made outfit but by closer inspection there is interest there's color contrast there's something to look at that's just not a void that's absorbing space time color and light even though I've done multiple Firminas, each one I've been ever so slightly different with the colour palette as not to be uh, boring and have a bunch of carbon copies. This one was a bit more extreme in the experimental with colour, starting the base of the hair with orange and going with more architectural colours. The flesh was using what stock I've had and blushing it up with the lavishous uh, clear orange for extra tone and a few areas just had some touch up of uh, various types of paint by hand uh, airbrushing with a two mil nozzle in the uh, rabbit ears and giving everything a wash regardless to pick up any seams detail panels all that sort of thing not being a dead black you could still see what was in those seams and then touching up the edges with a silver or a white weathering pencil and even doing the eyebrows on the face with a makeup pencil and topping it off with a matte lacquer clear. The best thing about not painting the whole thing black or dark blue and having four or three Ziploc bags of different very dark colors, the mechanical machine bits such as the backpack, the arms and the weapons were done in metallic black with highlights of gunmetal and whatnot and that difference in pigment and sheen to the matte clothing offset it and two tones of uh, matte clothing more or less made this not just 
what it looked like in bare plastic, even though it was clear that you'd have black parts and non-black parts. The apron and shoulders have always been a problem with each kit, as being stark white, it absorbs everything, especially on a black background. This I didn't mind too much, but with a grey wash I was able to pick up the details and divert the attention of the eyes from the lacklustre detail that could be created through shadowing or shade. A few details like the belt buckles and whatnot were also hand painted in gold. Uh, the washes or black wash definitely outlined it and uh, made it far more easier to blend in with the whole project and everything received a final coat of clear matte for clothing and remained glossy or semi-glossy for the mechanical components contrasting the two for sure. Each part was carefully assembled after a few days drying and full chemically being hardened with PVA glue in the joints that has been previously uh, loosened and may be unable to hold tension was permanently placed together and put into a pose back on the clear stand showcasing a finished model it's probably the best quality for me out of the collection of uh, four that I currently have the first one done quite a while ago with an obvious uh, image or display of progression in improvement and skill this concludes the build and far more long-winded than a model that I haven't built from box funnily enough there was a bit to talk about thank you very much for watching as always until next time stay tuned for further content check out the links below in the description section the write-up all the social media different links such as Facebook and Twitter where I post work in progresses and stuff that uh, is happening well before a video is made. Catch you guys next time. Thank you for watching.